start then. So um, this morning's playlist on Spotify, it's called The Goonas. And I said this on Monday as well, that every time I say that word, it just makes me think about the Goonies, <laughs> which I love that movie so much. It always makes me laugh, but it's the Goonas, so G-U-N-A-S. And let's start lying down on the front of your body. So you can lie on the tummy and turn your head to one direction, like let, let one of your cheeks rest on the mat. And unless you don't want to lie on your... If it doesn't feel comfortable for you to lie on your stomach this morning, then of course you could lie on your back. But sometimes it's nice to um, to feel the breath, really, when we're on our tummy. You can feel the, uh, the physical movement of your breath sort of doing its thing in your body, so it's quite nice. And you might just ride the wave of your breath and just feel a gentle rise and fall. Or you might decide to exaggerate that um, sort of expansion, sort of let the, let the belly really push into the mat. And you might find this creating space throughout the back of the body as well. So just sort of play around with that this morning and just settle in here to your practice, to your body, to your breath. So over these last few weeks, we've been exploring Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and in particular, the five reasons why we suffer or these um, obstacles to our freedom, the kleshas. And much of that discussion has been around Purusha, which is unchanging. It is the knower. And I spoke sort of um, about that weeks ago. It seems like ages ago, really. The difference between uh, Purusha and Prakriti and we haven't really talked a lot about Prakriti, and this week we'll be focusing on it. Prakriti is all that is known. So this is sort of dynamic and changeable aspects, whether psychological or material. And Prakriti is affected by the gunas, which are forces or states of being. And the ancient teachings explain that all levels of our experiences are made up of different combinations of these three forces, the gunas, which are sattvic, rajas, and tamas. So sattvic is a harmonious, joyful, inspired state, sort of unveils to us what is true and real. And then we have rajas, which is an agitation, an over-energized, sort of manic state. And finally, we have tamas, which is dull, lethargic, heavy, lifeless. So this is sort of when we feel unmotivated, inattentive, like you have to kind of drag yourself through the day. So if you have your head turned to one side, just change it now. So bring the other cheek to rest and get a little length on the other side of the neck. So it's important to know that none of these states of being are wrong or bad. There's really nothing negative. They just are interplaying forces among our... And the goal of yoga is to Try to enhance the quality of sattva because here we have harmony. We bring the mind into a calm yet alert state. <clears throat> and we have this alertness. It makes it more easy for us to recognize what force is impacting the mind. And then we have an easier time reining the mind in. So this morning we're going to do our best to cycle through these forces with the goal of leaving you in a state of sattva. So... Just notice how these states of being are for you. Is one more familiar than the other? Is one more difficult to embrace? Allow your focus to be less on the physical postures and more on your internal experience. So just going to bring your neck into a alignment. So you could just take your hands, stack one over the other, rest your forehead on the hands now, and just let the back of the neck lengthen for a couple breaths. So you've gone from side to side to right in the middle. And you might even just consider what state of being you're in right now. Maybe you feel that sort of uh, lethargy, having just woken up from sleep, 
Maybe you're feeling full of energy this morning. Maybe you're in that harmony, just, you know, sort of balanced state of sattvic. And then just bring your hands under your shoulders, press yourself back to your heels and come into child pose. And from child pose, slide your hands towards your knees so that you end up in a seated kneeling position. And then with your next breath, we're just going to come up high onto the knees and tuck your toes under. Try to feel that you could get all 10 of the toes tucking. Unless this gives you cramp, then of course you can keep them flat, but just stretching through the bottoms of the feet. And if it feels okay, you might even sit back to your heels here and just um, create a more intense stretch there, but only if it feels all right. And then bring your palms together in front of the heart. And when you take your next inhale, just come back to that high kneel and reach your arms up overhead. Interlace your fingers, press your palms up to the ceiling, and then take a side bend, doesn't matter which direction. Don't let it go so far that you feel you can't sort of control it from the center or that your weight shifts to one side. Try and keep balanced through the body and then come back up and over the other direction, side bending the other way. Keep your toes tucked for as long as it's comfortable for you. Let them be flat if that's better. And then back through the center on your next breath. As you exhale, just bring your hands through the heart center and start to lower. Palms to the mat, forehead can touch like a little bow. And then press up to all four, pull the heart through, reach the hips up, tummy towards the mat, stretching into cow pose. As you exhale, we're just going to lengthen through the tail, curl the spine into cat, breathe into the back of the body. Next breath, bring yourself into a neutral spine and then lift your hips, press back. A short down dog, so short meaning sort of hands and feet quite close probably. And then float your knees back on your next breath and press back to your heels into child pose. Let's do that one more time. So as you breathe in, rising up onto the knees, arms reach up overhead, palms meet, fingers interlace, press the palms away. So side bend, go the other side first this time. So if you went right first, go left first. Couple breaths there. Then bring yourself back to center. You're gonna side bend the other way. Back up to center, we're gonna bring the hands down through the center and take that little bow to the mat. And then press up all four and pull the heart through, hips lift, stretch through the front of your body. As you exhale, pull everything in and stretch through the back of the body. And then when you inhale, neutral spine, Next, exhale, lift the hips, press back to down dog. Now, make it your down dog. So if your hands and feet feel too close, then maybe walk the hands out or the feet out and just ease your body in. So stretching through the backs of the legs maybe, maybe you need to kind of move the hips from side to side. So just find your way into down dog. And really finding your way means being able to use the legs more than the arms. So tummy pulls up, those legs should be holding you and shouldn't feel loads of weight into the hands. Sometimes it takes a few down dogs and more warming up for the body to make that happen. And then next exhale, let's come forward. So step yourself, walk yourself up to the front of your mat. Let yourself just kind of hang down to the legs. So let yourself be sort of floppy here, not engaged. And we just let the body kind of hang. <clears throat> and then on your inhale, you're gonna rise up to stand. Let the palms meet overhead, exhale come back to the center. So let's do a sun salutation A. Let's do it in this sort of state of Thomas. So 
We can relate this state of being to our practice that when we're not engaged, when we're just kind of going through the motions and our body floppy, we find that state of being. So we just do like a lazy sun salutation A, which is fine. So reach yourself, reach your arms even up overhead. And as you exhale, just let yourself kind of flop down to the legs. Then we have that half forward bend. Then we soften again, the palms find the mat. Take it back to plank. Lower yourself down from plank. Move into your back bend and press back to down dog. And just breathing in downward facing dog. Now, when you exhale, stepping forward, and then we lengthen the heart forward, let ourselves drape to the legs, and then rising up to stand. Palms touch, exhale back to the heart. So, floppy state, doing sun salutation A, is not really recommended, but actually we've probably all, all been guilty of this. Even when we start yoga, engagement isn't really the thing it's like finding the shape so now we're going to change it to engage so really anchor through your feet pull up from the inner arches of your feet inner thighs pelvic floor low belly inhale reach your arms up keep rooting through the feet pull up from the belly as you dive down to your thighs full forward bend then when you inhale we want to really actively push away from the legs pull the heart forward lengthen the tailbone long and then exhale again. Let your palms find the mat under the shoulders. Just push through your hands till you feel that area around your armpit, your rib cage, wake up, and then step back. Hang out in plank for a breath or two. Pull through the legs, keep your shoulders spread, have a breath, and then lower. So your knees can always touch first, elbows bend back, keep that collarbone long as you lower down. And then Engage the legs and the belly, support your spine and your back bend. And then exhale, tuck your toes. Lift the belly up to help you press back to down dog. Now we're in down dog, breathing. Nice, slow, deep breaths. When you exhale, coming forward, inhale to really actively lengthen the spine, and then exhale, sink to the legs. We keep engagement through the feet, inner thighs, pelvic floor, and leave ourselves up to stand. Palms meet overhead, and exhale, come back to the center. So now we're going to do... Um, Shivananda sun salutation. So we're going to try to um, burst up the energy. So this is going to be a little quick. Try to keep your breath with you. It's all familiar postures. So inhale, reach up nice and tall. When you exhale, dive down to the legs. This time, giant step back with your right foot. We're in a runner's lunge. Now back to plank and lower yourself down. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Have a cycle of breath here. Then when you exhale, right foot steps forward. You're back in that runner's lunge, pulling the heart forward, lengthening the tail. And then the back foot steps forward. Fold to the legs. Inhale, rising up to stand. Palms come together. Exhale, back to the heart. Same thing, left leg steps back. So inhale, reach up nice and tall. Exhale, diving down to the legs. On that next breath, step that left foot back to your lunge and then back to plank and lower yourself down from plank. Back bending, thinking about keeping all the engagement as you press back to down dog. 
Have a cycle of breath here. Next exhale, left foot comes forward, lengthening the spine. And then exhale, back foot steps to meet the front foot and we fold at the top of the mat. Then inhale, rise up to stand. Palms come together, exhale back to the heart. Exact same thing, one more time on each side. So inhale, reach up nice and tall. Exhale, dive down. Inhale, step that right leg back. Pull the heart forward. Then we lower down from plank on the exhale. Breathing in, back bending, breathing out, downward facing dog. Have a cycle of breath here. And then next exhale, right foot forward. We're in that lunge. And then left foot forward, folding to the legs. Inhale, rise up to stand. Exhale, back to the heart. Last one. Inhale, reach up nice and tall. Exhale, folding to the legs. Step back your left foot on the next breath. Come into that lunge. Then we take our last vinyasa. Making your way into down dog. Cycle of breath here. Exhale, left foot forward. Back to the lunge. Step that right foot to meet the left. Fold to the legs. Then power up to stand. Palms touch together, exhale back to the heart. Now just lie yourself down in Shavasana. So just coming to the mat and just noticing your state of being now. So a little more energized, <coughs> excuse me. Here we have our Raja state. So just watching the breath start to slow down again, just noticing what you notice really. And then you could just hug the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little rocking from side to side. You're going to make your way into downward facing dog, however you would like to do that. So you could roll to the side, press up, you could rock up to sit, maybe come onto the hands and knees, tuck the toes, press back into down dog. And then with your next exhale, step your right foot forward, turn your back heel in, push the ground away and rise up to warrior one. So going to be a little more still here. Try to think about the foundation of the pose through the feet. So activating from the feet up through the legs to the pelvic floor, low belly, Try to keep the shoulders drawing down and sort of up towards the ears, keeping the arms nice and active. Let your breath be with you. See if you could just be in this posture, warrior one. And then just gonna swing the arms behind Interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulders together, or reverse prayer, or just holding on to whatever you can grab that's comfortable. Straighten your front leg. Imagine you have a bar in front of your hips that you have to reach out over and then come down to forward bend. Let the chin sort of lengthen towards the chest so the neck is long, so you're not leading from the chin. You lead from the crown of the head down towards the leg. Try to keep your shoulders from coming with you and try to keep that collarbone nice and wide still.
Now, just start to release your arms. Let them sort of flop down towards the floor. Find yourself in maybe a more uh, relaxed forward bend. So not as engaged. You don't have to worry about where the shoulders are. You can just let yourself soften and just see how that feels compared to that more strongly engaged forward bend. Then bend your front knee, step back to down dog, or you could make yourself go, not make yourself, but you can go through vinyasa if you want to, but sort of like whip through it quite quickly so you get that real energized state. But of course, you don't have to do that. You can just stay in down dog. And then let's do the other side. So when you take your exhale, left foot steps forward, that back heel turns in slightly. We're gonna stand up into warrior one again. So we try to keep the pelvis facing forward as much as possible, anchor through both the feet. See if we could even really pull into that back heel and just breathing here. Once again, we can swing the arms behind. Choose your shoulder stretch that works for you. Let the shoulders actively be engaged. So it isn't just the arms that are holding them, but it's actually the muscles. Straighten that front leg, reach out, and then down. Leading from the crown of the head. Trying to keep those shoulders on the back. Try to keep the legs strong, the low belly supporting. and then release your arms. Let yourself soften a little more in this forward bend, just noticing what you notice. And then once again, bring the palms to the mat, step back to down dog, or you can take a quick vinyasa Couple breaths in down dog, and then moving into child pose when you're ready. So knees float to the mat. Sit back to the heels, and just settle in there for a couple breaths. And then from child pose, make your way onto your back. When you come onto your back, let your heels come in towards your sit bones. And then take your arms down by the side of the body. So we can come into a sort of a more relaxed bridge pose, where if we just kind of go through the motions, we just lift the hips up. And just have a breath there with the hips lifting and then lower back down again and then let's do it in a more engaged way in a more sapphic way where we really make sure the heels are in the right position so if you look down the side of your body and you see your feet they're probably too wide and also want to make sure that your uh, feet aren't too close so that potentially have like a fist width between your inner thighs and then really pushing through the feet, actively engage. When you do that, you might just feel the tailbone lengthen, the pelvis tilts towards the belly, and then peel your spine up by lifting the hips, but trying to articulate each little vertebra one by one, even the chest lifting and reaching towards the chin, but the neck stays long, so don't turn your head. Without moving, just imagine you pull your feet apart and can you get your outer hips to kind of wrap around, turn your butt muscles on? Can you push your feet even deeper into the mat to support your back? And then slowly lower the spine from the top, 
all the way down to the bottom. And when your spine comes down to the mat, just going to sort of heel toe your feet a little wider. So your feet come to the edges of the mat. You could open your arms out wide and then just let your knees move from side to side. And as they move, let your hips come too. So as your knees go to the right, you'll feel your left um, hip bone kind of reaching right too. And then as you go to the left, you let that right side of the pelvis move with you. So let it be fluid, You're just sort of counterposing the body here. So we'll take one more to the right, finish on the left. Of course, if you started to the left, take your final twist to the right. And then when your knees are back to center, just bring them in towards the chest and sort of draw the knees in and then let them just soften away. So we just like little pulses with the knees to stretch out the back. And then stretch yourself out for our final posture of Shavasana. Now, just because we are resting in Shavasana doesn't mean we're sort of falling into that state of dullness or lethargy, that Thomas state. For some people, Shavasana is a state of agitation, being still very difficult. But the goal of Shavasana is to really feel that sattvic state, that harmonious, joyful, sort of clarity, mindfulness, contentment. So we can do this by just focusing the attention. As you let your body start to settle, just try to bring your awareness to where you feel the breath in your body. You might notice it in the belly. You might feel the rib cage expanding. It might even just be the sensation of air through your nostrils. So just take a moment to just bring your awareness to where you notice the breath moving. And let your concentration sort of really fixate on that point. Just watching that point where you can really feel the sort of sensual experience of your breath. Samkhya philosophers say that life exists for the purpose of acquiring experience and knowing the self. The gunas are meant to facilitate this spiritual endeavor. They reveal, conceal, and stir us up, all for the purpose of drawing us closer to Purusha, the knower. They reveal, conceal, and stir us up all for the purpose of drawing us closer to Purusha, the knower.
down slowly, slowly, coming back. Then deeper breaths, gentle movements, maybe even just letting the head sort of roll from side to side. Then you might like to engage the toes, the fingers, and a little wiggling until you feel ready for bigger movements, like a big stretch, or maybe you want to go straight into that sort of state of hugging the body with the knees to the chest. But whatever you're doing, let it lead you to lie on the right side for a short moment. And then when you feel ready, Come on up to sit. So I thank you everyone. Namaste.